morning guys Troy here uh, welcome welcome to the crossing uh, fellowship YouTube channel um, today we're going to be looking at John chapter 1 verse 29 picking up where we left off just a couple of weeks ago um, but before we jump in uh, to that I, I want to ask you a question what is sin there's a lot of confusion about uh, what sin is. Um, ultimately, sin is just disregarding God. It is failing to live up to His righteous standard. Um, one person described it as missing the mark. You know, the interesting thing about sin is, and this may be shocking to you, that ignorance is not an excuse either. And it doesn't change God's expectation. You know, yes, our sin hurts ourselves and it hurts others, but ultimately all sin, all sin is an offense to God. You know, we can see the impact of sin in the scriptures, right? throughout the scriptures, how it separates mankind from God, how, how, it, how mankind hurts mankind, and the death and destruction that, that sin brings into the world. You know, our, our enemy uses sin. He uses sin to keep us enslaved and keep us away from salvation. Our enemy uses sin to perpetuate excuse me, a cycle of, of hurt and destruction in the lives of others. And you know, we might excuse sin, our culture might excuse sin, but that does not, that does not justify us. Because God is the righteous standard. And He's made it clear in His Word what He expects of us. We might, we might justify our wrongful actions, but God sets the standard. He is the standard. Let me ask you another question regarding sin. Where is your sin? Where is your sin right now? Well, if you're a child of God, Scripture says that your sin has been removed from you. It's been covered up, taken away as far as the east is from the west. You've been saved by the power, if you have been saved by the power of the gospel, your sins have been covered over and paid for in full. You know, the answer is, is simple regarding this question, where is your sin? Either you are in Christ and your sin has been covered up and removed, or you are still in your sin, facing the total, the total penalty of it. If you're in Christ, you have received His righteousness. His righteousness has been, as we discussed a couple of weeks ago, imputed to you. Only Jesus Christ can take away the sin of humanity. And that brings us to our focal verse for today, John chapter 1, verse 29. It says, The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him, and he said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. You know, the lamb was a familiar sac uh, was a familiar sacrifice to the to the Jews. Going back to Genesis chapter 2, 7 is the first place we see a lamb mentioned. God provided a lamb for Abraham. Let me let me read to you um, Genesis 22:7. Isaac said to Abraham, "Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Now we know the story. God commanded Abraham to sacrifice his only son. And Abraham faithfully went up to carry out what God had told him to do. And just, just as and the knife was about to fall. The Lord stopped him and said, Look, 
And God provided this this young lamb as a substitutionary sacrifice. This is a first example of a, a substitutionary atonement that we see in the scriptures. And really it paints a, a beautiful picture of... Uh, an agonizing picture of the reality of our situation. Uh, I think, I think about how you know, just you know, we were about to face. We 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 deserve ju judgment and death and punishment, uh, the wrath of God, and yet, in just the right time, God sent His Lamb. God sent His Son. God sacrificed His Son so that we might live you know with the exception of a prophecy in Isaiah and a parable Sam in 2nd Samuel every time the word lamb is used in the scriptures it's used and referenced to sacrifice and atonement Exodus and Leviticus and numbers speak of the lamb the most regarding the full ritual sacrifice of the Old Testament. Isaiah 52 through Isaiah 53, also known as the Gospel of God, prophetically summarizes Christ's sacrifice for the sins of mankind. Isaiah prophesied about a lamb that would be led to the slaughter, Isaiah 53, 6. So God provided um, a lamb for a man, I mentioned earlier. God also provided a lamb for the nation of Israel when he delivered them from bondage in Egypt. Take some time and read Exodus 12, verses 1 through 36. God delivered his people from, from the angel of death by the blood of the lamb that was painted over, uh, over the door. And that's interesting. Because only the blood of the Lamb of God can preserve us and save us from death. Spiritual death. And it's only by the blood of the Lamb that, that we, we can truly find freedom and that we can move out of the slavery of sin into the country that God has prepared for us. You know, a lamb was used in the daily sacrifices of Israel. You can read about that in Leviticus 14 and Hebrews 10. So here we are. It's that next day after, after John was being questioned by that delegation from, it, um, uh, from Jerusalem. And he sees Jesus coming. And he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes the sins of the wor uh, world away. Jesus knew that Jesus Christ was going to offer himself as the atoning sacrifice for humanity. The Apostle John carried this theme of the Lamb of God throughout his writings. In John uh, chapter 19 verse 26 he made note that not a bone was broken and, and if you go back and you, you read in Exodus about the, the Passover you'll find that, that God gave specific instructions in the Old Testament there that, that not a bone was to be broken in the sacrificial lamb. In the, in the book of Revelation, John describes the victorious power of the lamb whose blood cleanses, whose power protects and provides and guides his children. The lamb is referred to in the book of Revelation more than any other book. In the Bible. So John the Baptist, the Apostle John, even Peter remind us that God provided a precious lamb for our deliverance. 1 Peter 1 18 through 21. For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before creation, the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and your hope, and so your faith and your hope are in God. 
So only Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, is worthy to atone for our sins. He was without sin. He was without spot or blemish, just like that Passover lamb was to be. What is atonement? Let me just touch on that for a second. Atonement is the reconciliation of man to God through Jesus Christ. It is the end of our estrangement from God and puts an end to that hostility between us and God. Because of the gospel concerning Jesus Christ, humankind can once again be at peace with God. Apart from the Lamb of God, there is no peace with God. Because apart from the Lamb of God and receiving what He has done for us, we are still in our sin, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So Jesus came, as John indicated, Jesus came to take away the sins of the world. John's first public announcement regarding Jesus Christ and who he was, was to say, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the word, world. The, wor the world's uh, world here, the word world here, uh, is cosmos and, and really refers to everything that has been created. But in this usage, he's referring to humanity. He is referring to mankind. And so the world in this sense refers to those trapped in spiritual darkness. Those, those whose minds and lives are altered around the principle that God is not God. The worldly mind is veiled from truth. It is aligned with the enemy. It opposes God. And it opposes God's rightful place in our life. It does not acknowledge God. The worldly mindset is the mindset of death and destruction. But the Lamb of God takes away the sins of the world. But you know, John is very precise. Jesus does not just take away the sins of all the world. He takes away the sins of those who receive Him. Christian singer Twyla Paris um, wrote a song called Lamb of God. And her words and description are very powerful. Your only son, no sin to hide, but you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty sod and to become the Lamb of God. Your gift of love they crucified. They laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a fraud and sacrificed the Lamb of God. O oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I was so lost, I should have died, but you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and to be called a Lamb of God. O oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. You know, let me borrow from the beautiful words of this song and ask you the most important question you will ever face in this life lifetime. And the answer impacts your life here and determines your place in eternity. Have you received the Lamb of God? Have you received the Lamb of God and become a Lamb of God? Have you heard the Great Shepherd's call? He is drawing you to his side. 
Are you called by his name, little lamb? You know, the scripture tells us what we, we need to do. In Romans 10, verses 9, 9 through 13, Romans 10, 9 through 13, if you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. The scripture says, Anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame, for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord God will be saved. That's you if you call on his name. That's the promise of scripture. I didn't make that up. The Lamb of God is also the great shepherd who calls us to his side. Jesus said, my sheep listen to my voice i know them and they follow me i give them eternal life and they shall never perish no one will snatch them out of my hand my father who has given them to me is greater than all no one can snatch them from my father's hand and the father and i are one and i'll leave you with this last beautiful description of the restoration of eden recorded in revelation 22. And then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as, cl as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and, and out of the Lamb. And down the middle of the great street of the city, on each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit trees every month. You, excuse me, re yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations, and no longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the throne of the Lamb will be in the city, and His servants will serve Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. And they will not need the light of the lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord of God, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. I hope you will be in that restored Eden, immersed in the glory of God, surrounded by the glory of the Lamb of God who came to take away your sins. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.